This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, March 28th. An elderly woman is struggling to understand the circumstances surrounding her son's death. Grieving 76-year-old Shandis Callender is disturbed by the news that her son, 56-year-old Herbert Callender, died today after he was stabbed during an altercation with another man at Gardenland Country Road St. Michael earlier this morning. According to police, he was taken to hospital by a private vehicle but was pronounced dead on arrival. His mother is puzzled by his death and she says she will miss her son. I see Herbie stabbed the side of me there. But he don't live here, he live across the gap. But he come on the corner, shout me. And he said, Mom's oh yeah, so he's been there. You know? And he would shout me, go on, clean the car on there. And he gone. He come here regular. He comes regular, but he don't live here. He don't live here. And we just get along good. He loving, but something was very disgusting, you know? But other than that. He's all good. All they say is my son gone and I get miss Herbie. Cause when I look for that when they say Herbie, car park yonder. He washing the car and he polishing and he polishing and he polishing and cleaning. Very clean and tidy, very clean and tidy. Oh, Herbie gone. Yeah, I see his son washing it was Saturday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right yonder. Right yonder. Mm-hmm. Oh, her be gone long. The Senate on Monday stamped its approval on provisions for four senior ministers' posts that Leader of Government Business Senator Lisa Cummins said will not only enhance coordination of major projects, but ultimately lead to improving the ease of doing business and attracting more foreign investment. She highlighted the benefits of the coordinating ministers' roles as she introduced a resolution to approve the ministers' and parliamentary secretaries' remuneration and allowances order 2022. Senator Cummins said there are several projects that involve a variety of ministries and government agencies that require a range of approvals and coordination oversight will therefore be beneficial. When we have tourism investment projects, for example, they come from an investor or from the private sector. They then have to find their way, Mr. President, through maybe five, six, seven arms of government to have those approvals, including the culmination of uh, town and country planning Mm -hmm. approval. And it involves the Ministry of Tourism as well, under the Tourism Development Act. Those are complex approval processes that govern infrastructure development and town and country planning processes. But they also have a direct impact, Mr. President, on our ability to engage in investment projects, to, for us to be able to move more smoothly through doing business indicators, Mr. President. There also is the implication for us to be able to attract investment to the country and to be able to provide jobs, both in the construction of new projects and when those projects are completed. It is also, Mr. President, the ability for us to be able to make a strong statement to the world that one investor has been so successful or all investors have found the experience of doing business in Barbados so efficient and so effective that it is able to bring further investment to Barbados and with it more jobs and more opportunities for Barbadians. Senator Cummins stressed that the inclusion of senior ministers would also help to improve governance She stressed it was important that Barbadians understand how government works and call for the introduction of civics education. As we grow through the process of managing governance and we listen to the conversations, it is very clear in our country that there absolutely must be civics education and civic education on how our country works and how the arms and the institutions of government work. Because it is very clear that so many still need to benefit from that exposure and that understanding that those of us who came through the government service at any level have been able to benefit from. And so the importance of experienced eyes, experienced hands who understand the mechanisms of governance and government and how it works is very much incorporated in the structure of senior ministers in particular since our cabinet, as the country also knows, brings that balance between youthful, new, fresh eyes and skills alongside experience. Firefighters have been battling a raging grass fire which started last night and continued into the day, damaging several utility poles. 
Acting Station Officer of the Barbados Fire Service, Tremel Perch, told Barbados Today on Monday that fire officers received a call on Sunday night about a fire at Ballantyne Christchurch. And despite their efforts, the blaze spread to the Globe Drive-In, Hope and South Ridge. The station officer said three fire trucks and 14 officers responded to the incident. We have received a call to a fire at Bannatine last night and it would have progressed into a bigger fire this morning into um, by the back, by the drive-in, the globe drive-in, as well as the, the Hope and Southridge. So we had three fire trucks that responded to this area with uh, 14 fire officers and we slowly but surely getting the fire under control at this time. And now for today's COVID-19 update. Barbados recorded 102 new COVID-19 cases, that's 47 males and 55 females, from 571 tests conducted on Sunday by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the positive cases, 17 persons were under the age of 18 and 85 were 18 years and older. A total of 47 people were in isolation facilities, while 826 were in home isolation. An 88-year-old fully vaccinated man passed away from the virus on Sunday. Total deaths now stand at 331. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Pure oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, in Trinidad and Tobago, all students are required to return to the physical classroom in April. We get the details from Kimberly D'Souza. And based on the advice from the officials of the Ministry of Health, the government of Trinidad and Tobago has taken the decision to fully reopen all schools at the ECCE, primary, secondary and tertiary levels from April 19, 2022. Confirmation from Education Minister Dr. Nian Gatsby Dolly that students who were engaged in online learning will return to the physical classrooms for the first time in two years. Chief Education Officer Mrs. Lisa Henry David said COVID-19 management in schools will continue to be monitored by the staff of the Education District Health Unit. She said staff, students and those who visit the school must adhere to the following rules. Mandatory wearing of masks. The exception being our early childhood care and education students. Two, temperature check at entry points. Three, hand washing at stations at school's entrances, as well as at strategic points throughout the school's compound. And four, the use of hand sanitizers. Students will be required to attend school every day as no rotational schedules will be operated. Director of School Supervision Mrs. Joy Griffith said subjects in class tabling will revert to normal pre-COVID hours for primary and secondary school students. She also confirmed that whole school assembly and breaks will be allowed and provided an update on the ministry's stance to school uniforms. On the international scene, Ukraine set its top objective at the first face-to-face -face talks with Russia in over two weeks due to take place in Turkey tomorrow is to secure a ceasefire, although both it and the United States were skeptical of a major breakthrough. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said Sunday he was ready to move forward with a peace deal with Russia, but insisted on territorial integrity of his country after suggesting earlier he was ready for a compromise. We have a new round of negotiations ahead, because we seek peace, really, without delays. I am informed that there is an opportunity and need for a face-to-face -face meeting in the territory of Turkey, which is not bad. We will look at the result. Our priorities in the negotiations are known. The sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine are beyond doubt. Zelensky's remarks to Ukrainians came ahead of peace talks with Russia to be held in person in Turkey from Monday to Wednesday. 
Earlier in the day, Zelensky spoke to Russian journalists in a video interview the Kremlin had preemptively warned Russian media to refrain from reporting. However, in that call, he'd adopted a different tone, saying his country was ready to discuss a neutral stance as part of a peace deal with Russia and compromise over the status of the eastern Donbas region. He spoke to the journalists in Russian. Security guarantees and neutrality, non-nuclear status of our state. We are ready to go for it. He said he would refuse to discuss certain demands from Moscow, such as the so-called denazification of Ukraine. After more than four weeks of conflict, Russia has failed to seize any major Ukrainian city and signaled on Friday it was scaling back its ambitions to focus on securing the Donbass region. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.